actually two uh, two things, kind of incidents that that propelled me to to start this uh, nonprofit. Uh, the first was there's a young lady that. Uh, was a member of the Dickinson High School marching band. She played clarinet. And I, I didn't know her personally, but I used to see her, you know, during practices and because my son is in the marching band. And uh, she just always seemed to have such passion and joy for what she was doing out there. And uh, a, a couple of Halloweens ago, uh, she was walking down uh, Dickinson Avenue. And it's, and it's kind of a dark street, doesn't have sidewalks and that type of thing. Just, you know, one of those neighborhoods that typically get left behind in, 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 in development and she was hit by a hit and run driver and uh, and she's not with us anymore. And that along with the fact that my son needed to have private lessons and, and we couldn't afford it so I knew other parents couldn't afford it and when that happened to that young lady uh, I wanted to figure out a way to kind of honor her memory and honor her love for music that she had so that started me. Uh, to contemplate getting the, getting the ball rolling for uh, providing this center here for uh, underserved kids to be free for those kids. Yeah, that's, uh, it's extremely humbling to, to have those folks behind you. I mean, I did not expect this type of support. Uh, when I first started, I initially just kind of sat with, uh, with Pastor Simpson, who's a city councilman now, and just kind of asked him how, how to go about know starting something like this I mean I, I ran uh, a nonprofit in Phoenix years ago but you know laws and everything changed so I was kind of uh, behind the eight ball on uh, learning that stuff and he helped me out and and as it went on and the, the more support that we garnered and it, it was just amazing to me that that those folks you know uh, those upper those upper tier people really had a huge passion for what I was doing and, and they've been helping me out ever since and it's like I say it's humbling and those folks showing up tonight you know for our first night of classes uh, I'm still kind of stunned and, 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 and don't I, I guess once I get home it'll all hit me that you know those folks you know came out to to basically show support for our organization and I want the kids to see that support as well. That's a great, that is an absolute great feeling to know and to know that those folks, I mean, they, they and they, every time they see me, it's, it's always the same response. Whatever we can do to help you, Charles, just let us know. Uh, and for the, for the past year, I've been doing a lot of, uh, a lot of administrative uh, stuff to get this thing up and going. And I haven't had the, the opportunity to take them up on some of those offers and it really didn't matter because they, they offer all the time and they come out to things like this and it's just like the folks at the church you know they give us the use of their facility uh, with, with, you know, for no cost so it, it really helps out a lot and it, it, it means the world to me to be able to to get that support. Our, our, our student volunteers and coaches you know those three kids that we have that come down and, and work for us I can't tell you how impressed I am with those kids. They, like I said, they, they were willing to do it uh, on a volunteer basis, but I decided to add some, uh, some form of payment for those kids. So I, I'll be out hustling for donations and, and, and trying to get grants and, and those types of things so I can make sure that those kids get paid because uh, I, I'm really impressed with those guys. and. and I think those, other than our students, those kids are our biggest assets. I mean, they're young kids that are, that are learning, basically learning music education through this organization in case they want to further it once they get to college.